It is my pleasure to introduce Rabbi Zev Parat, who is the founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries. He was born in Israel into a Sanhedrin family and raised in one of the most Jewish Orthodox cities in Israel. Through a number of supernatural encounters, he was led to faith in Messiah Yeshua. Now he has dedicated his life to proclaiming the gospel publicly in Israel and leading many messianic house groups in Israel, which has brought knowledge of Messiah Yeshua to many Jews and Arabs. He and Carl Gallops recently co-authored the book, The Rabbi, The Secret Message and the Identity of Messiah. Zeb is also a correspondent and co-host on Freedom Friday with Pastor Carl. Uh, it's my proud, I am so proud to introduce and proud to welcome, again, Rabbi Zev Parat. Shalom. It's an honor and a blessing to be here as always with family and mishpacha. One new man, amen? amen? Let's give glory and honor to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <laughs> Call Aaron Cohen to blow the shofar again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's all stand in prayer. Abba Father, we thank you that we can stand here together as the one new man and proclaim your glory and your word. Speak to our hearts today, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua. Abba Father, we ask that you open our hearts to your threshold, to your covenant, Abba Father. What you did for us in Jerusalem on the cross, on the tree, Abba Father, cannot be taken for granted. And we just ask, Father, that we don't deal with dates and with times, but we deal with the season. We deal with hearing your voice. We deal with hearing your word, the sharper than a two-edged sword. Abba Father, anything that's not from your word, we break off in the name of Yeshua and plead your blood, Abba Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they lack of one thing, which is the Holy Spirit. And many times I get emails from people and they ask me, don't you love the Jewish people? Why are you always saying we're not supposed to listen to the rabbis? Why are you always saying they lack of something that we don't have? Well, because they do. And it's called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand the written Word of God. We're small people with a big God, but the Holy Spirit is what reveals the Word to us. Amen? Amen. And as long as those, the Jews in Israel and around the world don't have the revelation from the Holy Spirit, they can't see. The gospel was given to Israel. Israel, in, in part, in part, the Bible says, were blinded in part, it's God's master plan, rejected the gospel. And therefore, the gospel went to the nations. So you can get salvation. Now it's time to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. Amen? We're here to tell you that there's one rabbi, and his name is Yeshua. But until that time, until that time, the Jews in Israel and around the world don't see Messiah Yeshua as the King of kings and Lord of lords. They look at their rabbis. And God said, okay, you're looking at a rabbi? I'm going to have the most venerated rabbi, not in modern day, in the history of Israel, according to what the Jews even say, in the history of Israel, to proclaim that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. And that's exactly what he did. And all hell is breaking out in Israel right now. We've got death threats, death notes, emails from the Sanhedrin in Israel, from the rabbinic movement in Israel, from the anti-missionary organization in Israel, Yad Lachim founded to deprogram believers, sending us threats, don't bring the book to Israel. You're asking, how do they know about the book? And until that time, it's important that we know how to pray for Israel. Psalms 122 verse 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper. 
that love thee. And I think I've shared this before, and I'll share it again. But love thee, in Hebrew, cannot mean a city. Love thee in Hebrew has to mean a person. And then therefore, in that Bible verse, when it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they will prosper that love thee. Love thee is Yeshua. It's Jesus. He's equalizing himself with Yerushalayim, with Jerusalem. That's why it says in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8, he who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. That's why it says in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. And through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And I believe I'm looking here at the remnant that's blessed. Amen? Amen. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you love Israel, or if you love Yeshua, you pray for Israel. Why did Yeshua have to be the Passover lamb? Why does Yeshua equalize himself with Yerushalayim, with Jerusalem? Why are there so many Bible verses that say, I have written my name on Jerusalem? Why is it when the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees confronted Yeshua, and they said, can you keep your disciples quiet? And I'm paraphrasing, but that's what the Bible verse says. Can you keep him quiet? And what did Yeshua answer them? Even if I do keep quiet, keep him quiet, the very rocks will cry out my name. Because he is Jerusalem. His name is on Jerusalem. And that's why in Psalms 122 verse 6 it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And if you do so, you love me. But how many of you here are praying for Jerusalem? Amen. Thank you. I want to thank you in the name of Yeshua, because Jews are being saved in Israel like never before. Your prayers are working. Arabs are being saved like never before. There is a revival in Israel. Amen. We use the, this opportunity to preach the gospel in Israel. Because people are beginning to understand that there's no hope except only through Messiah Yeshua. And the veil is being lift, lifted in Israel. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. We're having a harvest of souls in Israel. I want you to know that what you see on the internet that we post is not even 2% of what's really happening because not everyone wants their picture on the internet. Not everyone is willing to be exposed that they're going to be persecuted, they're going to be, we have freedom, we can have a conference right here and, and, and just worship Yeshua. I mean, we have security here, but if we do conferences like this in Israel, there has to be much more than just security. There has to be police squads outside. There has to be gunmen outside because there's always someone trying to attack I want to share um, another persecution story. My brother Aaron is here, Aaron Cohen from Canada. If you can stand up, he's the one that blew the shofar. And his mother, Patricia, the Holocaust survivor family. And Aaron and uh, Patricia have been involved in the ministry in Israel uh, various times. They live in Canada, where they come and they help sometimes with some of the outreaches as Many times you read my newsletters, those of you that uh, are subscribed and you say the team went out to pray, they went out to pray because we always have people praying with us when we go preach because the Bible says we're two or more and gathered than I am, amen? amen? So we can't go preach alone, we have to have somebody with us all the time, either physically preaching or physically praying with the team all the time and that's when Ima and Aaron came in and we have various stories, I don't have time to get into it, but Aaron was sitting one time in the, uh, in the Kotel area in the Western Wall. And he was uh, sitting there and praying as I was uh, witnessing to an Orthodox rabbi right there at the wall. And as he's praying, and, and other team members were praying, the rabbi starts weeping. You remember that, Aaron? He starts weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping. And the presence of the Holy Spirit just fell upon him. And then he stepped out. He accepted Yeshua as his personal Savior right there. So the prayer of the saints is so important. But I want to share, before I continue with the threshold, uh, a story of what happened in Tel Aviv a few years ago. I was in a conference, uh, in a big conference setting, and I was supposed to preach about the one new man. And the anti-missionary organization in Israel, Yad Lachim, uh, founded the Deep Program Believer, heard about it, found out that I'm going to preach the message, the one new man. And they don't like that one new man message. They want a one, a one side message. They don't want a one new man message. And I didn't think that they're going to come and attack me in the congregation. And 
I'm sitting with Aaron and uh, my wife and uh, Patricia and some other believers, and the security calls me over. He said, somebody here is, uh, you know, wants to talk to you. So I step out of the meeting, and I go out to the security guard, and there was a big guy. Remember how big he was? Big guy. I think he was 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, big, huge, orthodox man. Giant. And he catches my hand over here, and he says, you're not preaching the message today here. In fact, we're going we're gonna to bust your car right now. Where's your car? We're looking for your car. We're going to break all your call, all your windows, everything. You're not getting out of this place alive. Well, I prayed and I left. And I told, God told me to tell Aaron, take the keys of my car. And I told him, for some reason, God told me to park the car four blocks away today. And I explained him where the car was. Go to the place and find the car. And it was, it, was, it was pretty difficult to find it, right, Aaron? And then he got to the car, he calls me up, and he says, I got to the car, but the code is not working. I said, no, it's working. It just works opposite. Because, you know, they're always trying to hack our cars and, and make trouble and everything. So even the codes in the car I put opposite, the numbers work opposite. You have to work like an FBI agent in Israel. <laughs> so I explained him how it works, and he got the car going, and then he got the car out of there and met me uh, in Tel Aviv. I had to uh, uh, summon a special police squad in Israel to get me out of that building, not because we're afraid, but because we have wisdom. We're not going to go out there and, uh, and get vulnerable and, and, and let people start beating us up. So they got me out of the place, and the way I got, and they had to wait for me for two hours, and Tel Aviv is a very small place. And the reason they had to wait for me for two hours was I had to take a, to a detour around Tel Aviv to switch three taxis to make sure I'm not being followed. So this is how much they hate the message and how difficult it is uh, to preach the gospel in Israel. And this is just one story out of many. I want people to understand, this is Tel Aviv. You know, you're looking at Gaza and bombs. The real bomb is the bomb of Satan in the spiritual realm. Because if you're praying for Israel and you know what you're praying about, your prayer is much more effective. And you, so you need to know how to pray for Israel. In Psalms 122, God gives us the recipe because he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And the word peace, if you go to an original scroll, original Torah scroll, which is the word of God, you'll notice that the word peace is capitalized and it's in the middle of the sentence in Hebrew. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Why is it capitalized? Because God is showing us how to pray for, for Israel. The word peace in Hebrew is found in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Prince of Peace. So he's saying, the nations, you received salvation because the Jews rejected Yeshua. They missed his first coming. Now it's important that they don't miss his second coming because otherwise it'll be too late. And therefore you need to pray that they'll see the Prince of Peace. That's how you pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So they won't miss his second coming because right now we're all under grace. The nations are under grace. The Jews are under grace. But grace will come to an end. And God is saying, pray that the people of Israel, blood, anything, anytime you talk to a Jew about blood, he starts, he gets very nervous. Very nervous because he knows blood equals sacrifice. Sacrifice equals atonement. Atonement equals Messiah. Messiah equals Yeshua. But why the enemy is so at rage at Israel. The, it's all spiritual warfare. Why Jerusalem is ground zero. Why Jerusalem is the center of everything. If Jerusalem's at peace, the world's at peace. If Jerusalem's at war, the world's at war. Why is that? Because that is the place where Yeshua has put his name. If you know Hebrew, it's even, wow, boom, revelation. So the question is, do the Jews in Israel know Hebrew? Absolutely. Do they read the Bible in Hebrew? Absolutely. So how come they don't see what you see? Because they don't have the revelation of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. It is not a language issue. It is a spiritual issue. Now, I'm not saying that it's not good to study Hebrew. That's fine. That's good to study Hebrew. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, that Hebrew won't help you. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4 says, what is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. You have to know Yeshua was Jewish. He's always asking questions. What is his name? 
And what is it? He's always asking questions. You have to know he was Jewish. And the Jews, they know who Yeshua is. When the high priest was asked, asked Yeshua, who do you say you are? Are you, are you, and I'm paraphrasing, are you the Messiah? Are you the king of the Jews? And he answers him in Hebrew. There's a lot of translations in English, but in Hebrew he says, you say, I am. You say, I am. The same Hebrew word used when Moses was asked, told God, I can't, 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 can't speak. And God said, I'll speak for you. But who should I say sent me? And he said, yeah, yeah, I am that I am. The same word used in Hebrew when Jesus quoted, yeah, yeah, I am that I am. Praise his name. Let's give a clap to the Lord. Wherever Jews are around the world, they have what you call the mezuzah. A mezuzah is what they put on the doorpost. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And they would go in the house and they kiss the mezuzah when they go in. Well, that little mezuzah is taken from the Bible verse to put God's word on your doorpost and on the heart. But a mezuzah in Hebrew is a doorpost. So we think mezuzah means just, just that little box. But the whole doorpost is called a mezuzah. So, the word for, so actually what it says over here, put, write, write them on the mezuzot of your house. And I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, based on the word of God, is the mezuzah. He is the word. That's why it says in John chapter 1 verse 14, and the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. He is the word. He is the door. He is the mezuzah. The thing is the Jews are not, are beginning to get it right now. We had a lot of Jews come into faith by just speaking to them about the mezuzah and saying, wait a minute, let's have a look at the Hebrew word. Is the mezuzah just the box? Or is the mezuzah the whole door frame? And they say it's the whole door frame. I said, so why don't you write God's name on the whole door frame? Like the Bible says, why just in the little box? And they said, we don't, we don't know. We never thought about it. And I said, could it be that God is telling you that his name has to be written in your home? And could it be that your home is the temple of God? This is a model of... Uh, of the temple, so Yeshua's coming in from uh, a biblical time. Yeshua's coming in from the eastern, eastern gate, and we know he had to come in from the eastern gate. It's pointing to Bethany, the Mount of, Mount of Olives, where Yeshua had the dinner. So he's coming through the eastern gate. They're singing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And from the sheep gate, the high priest is bringing in the sheep also to be inspected for four days. And they're telling me this, but I'm not an airplane flight pilot. Okay, all right. We should go five more minutes. And now they begin to inspect the Passover lamb for four days. Mark chapter 12, verse 13. They sent some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. And I'm paraphrasing. We're going fast here. Matthew 26 Verse 59 and 60, the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Yeshua, against Jesus, so they could put him to death. So we see here that they're beginning to, they're inspecting the Passover lamb for four days. It's a dress rehearsal. It's a dress rehearsal. They're inspecting the Passover lamb for four days. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26, that all of us, through Yeshua, become priests because he's our high priest. And therefore we inherit the blessing of the of the, priest, the priestly blessing. So anyone who wants to stand and receive the blessing, the blessing is coming from the heavenly realm. It's not coming from me. But in he, the Hebrew text says it's individual prayer for each one of you. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Yivarechecha. Adonai vishmarecha, Ya'er Adonai panavelecha vichunecha, Isa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha shalom. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in Yeshua's name we pray, Amen.